to eventually change the public mood and divide South Africans one against another on the basis of race. That is a stark warning, but one to be taken seriously. This month, President Cyril Ramaphosa announced a review of Black economic empowerment policy. But what do ordinary South Africans think about BEE? Well, joining me to discuss is Gabriel Krauser, who is the head of campaigns at the Institute of Race Relations. Gabriel, welcome back to the CRA channel. Could you tell us what is public opinion saying at the moment about BEE? It's not looking good for those who propose this as some kind of policy of the people. Uh, the Institute of Race Relations commissioned Mark Data, an independent survey analyst last year, to do an opinion survey demographically representative across race, class, uh, gender lines, and across all nine provinces. The final question in the survey, I'll cut to that, was would you prefer a voucher-based system for health, education, and so on, to more BEE? Over 70% of people said they'd prefer the voucher-based system, and about but less than 20% of people of all races said they'd prefer more BEE, excepting, uh, perhaps surprisingly, for the white group, in which only 55% preferred a uh, voucher-based system, and 35% thought that they would get, a, get ahead uh, better with more BEE. Enjoying this analysis? Click here to sign up for our 30-day free trial for more content from the CIA. Some surprising results there, Gabriel. What other findings were emerging from the polling data? So we started out by asking people on an open list what they considered to be the major problems facing this country. 3% uh, identified racism, 95% uh, identified something else. The headline was unemployment, which is unsurprising given that most people my age and younger don't have a job. Crime, corruption, uh, bad housing, poor service delivery, poor education. These are also very high up. We asked people whether they'd personally experienced any form of racism whatsoever in the last five years. And 80% said no. I think a startling finding and good news in South Africa's context. Uh, but just because racism is not the grand national problem that it's made out to be, does not mean that South Africa isn't facing major challenges. People know what those challenges are and our polling indicates they realize that BEE is not part of the solution. So what does this say about the sustainability of the current BE model and the potential alternatives that we could be exploring in South Africa? I think it says that we really do live in a country of two South Africas, uh, one which has its hand on the levers of information, gatekeeping, taste making, and so on. That small elite proposes that uh, racism is the fundamental problem holding this country back and that race-based policy is the solution. We have a second South Africa of ordinary citizens, uh, the super majority, 70 or 80 percent, who think that uh, it's quite possible for us to work together, in fact, that we do so on a daily basis and that it's quite normal not to be racist, not to discriminate in any fashion. Now, the question is going to be which South Africa determines the future path at the moment, our latest poll indicated that most South Africans believe that politicians are talking up racism and colonialism in order to excuse their own failures. Half remain unconvinced of that, however, and in so far as the incumbent elite is able to maintain its near monopoly on mainstream uh, information channels, I think that BEE will not only remain as it is, but will be further reinforced by an amendment to Papuda that will criminalize uh, the sort of state that most institutions find themselves in, uh, most institutions not being racist whatsoever, uh, but having some inequality of outcomes uh, for other reasons that have to do with objective facts that will uh, no longer be allowable and is a policy being hotly pursued both by the ANC and its uh, alliance partners. Yes, Gabriel, we'll actually be doing some analysis on the Papuda Bill Amendment that you mentioned uh, just a moment ago. So to our viewers, please do keep a lookout for that. But Gabriel, to those uh, of our viewers who might be somewhat incredulous at these findings, could you just give us an explanation of the methodology behind the IRR's polling in this regard? Sure. So we ourselves are not a polling institution. Uh, we raise money and we pay that money to a private company that does it for us. We have used different companies in the past. In the last round, we used Mark Data, 
which is best in class in the industry for several decades, is used not only by other NGOs, by political parties, by private companies, but also by government and government departments. So it's trusted to do an objective job. It does in-person interviews in the language of the person's own choice to make sure that there are no uh, sort of failures of translation. It does that in all nine provinces. So when I say demographically representative across race and gender, I mean that you know 50% women, 50% male, 80% uh, black, 10% white, 10% colored, 5% Indian, rounding to the nearest 5%. Uh, it is a, a tried and tested you know, fact that you have ratios between sampling sizes and target groups that you're trying to identify and the confidence intervals that come with that. Uh, and they use all of the international best practice in that regard. So this particular poll is credible on its own. If you then conjoin it with the fact that the Institute of Race Relations has commissioned independent companies to do such polling with various methodologies over the last decade plus, and that the results have been relatively consistent. I mean, perfectly consistent in terms of uh, the headline findings of whether people prefer more race-based policy versus whether they prefer uh, devolution of power into the hands of citizens. We keep finding the same results in that regard. And I think that's a, a very strong indicator that our finger is on the pulse and that we are detecting the popular mood. So Gabriel, this seems inconsistent with the tenor of public discourse. If you look at uh, social media, at uh, mainstream media commentary, the intelligentsia that you mentioned, uh, do you think that there's a risk that these kind of mainstream uh, ideas of ordinary South Africans might be polluted by some of the more racialized discourse uh, from, from the, the media and other channels? It is possible. If you look at the data, if you look, if you compare surveys over the last decade, you see reports of uh, racial minorities, I'm thinking in particular of whites and Indians, of experiencing racism personally going up. Uh, you see portions of people saying that uh, the races do not all need to work together in order for us to get ahead as a country also going up. So, you know, it remains a small minority at 20%, but that's much higher than 15% or 10% uh, a, a decade earlier. If we look back in South Africa's own history uh, to the period of the 1930s and 1940s, we see uh, not polling, but uh, various other forms of historical evidence to suggest that most South Africans were far more tolerant and accepting of one another than they became after the implementation of apartheid. So it is the case that the combination of politics uh, in terms of the meeting out of hard power, as well as rhetoric, can combine in this incendiary and unabated fashion to eventually change the public mood and divide South Africans one against another on the basis of race. That is a stark warning, but one to be taken seriously. If we don't uh, check this soon or now, it might become too late. Well, thanks very much, Gabriel. We'll put a link to one of the recent IRR reports in the description below and in the pinned comment for anybody who would like to investigate further. But also a message to you, our viewers, if you would like to receive our new free weekly newsletter from the CRA, there is also a link in the description to our website where you can subscribe to the newsletter that comes out every Thursday. So you'll get that next week. My name is David Ansara. This is the CRA. Until next time, take care.